Anger in Senegal's capital. Supporters of opposition leader Usman Sonko have been fighting with security forces. Schools and shops are shut as violence and looting spread from one neighborhood to another. They accuse President Macky Sall of using the justice system to eliminate political opponents and cling on to power. We elected Macky Sall to work, not to establish a dictatorship. He must leave Sonko alone. If he does not, we will burn the country. In this heavily guarded vehicle is Sonko on his way to a trial that could end his political aspirations. He's charged with slander after he accused a state minister of corruption. If convicted, he cannot contest the 2024 presidential elections. As crowds gathered, security forces forced Sonko out of his vehicle. He says he was injured in the scuffle. The judge hearing his case has adjourned the proceedings because of Sonko's injuries. But the fighting on the streets continues. Moments ago, demonstrators stormed this supermarket in an upscale neighborhood. They tried to take drinking water, rice, vegetable oil. So much of these riots are driven by people who feel left out by the government. Despite a booming economy, inequality is growing. What's going on in Senegal is, goes beyond Usman Sonko or Macky Sall. We have been on a roller coaster in terms of polarization, in terms of exclusion, in terms of restricting and closing of civic space. The court cases is rising political tensions and deepening a sense of injustice among those feeling alienated by the state but wanting to get their voices heard. Nicholas Hawk, Al Jazeera. <laughs> Molotov cocktails and tear gas mix with shouts of murder, and the apology is fake. <laughs> Students, rail union workers, and average citizens have been taking to the streets of Athens in the days since a horrific head-on collision between two trains. 
the only way things will change is if people come out on the streets and fight because we have had more than enough promises and measures. Demonstrators accuse the government of failing to act on known safety issues plaguing the nation's rail system. Issues that may have led to two trains, one full of passengers, the other loaded with cargo, running on the same line for several kilometers and then colliding. A provisional death toll of 57 was given at the time. Many remain unaccounted for as a result of the speed of the crash and subsequent explosion. DNA testing is ongoing on remains found at the site and nearly 50 people are still being treated in hospital. The European Public Prosecutor's Office is also now involved. It's looking into a contract about the upgrade of signaling systems on Greek trains. The Greek Prime Minister toured the site the day after the crash and has since offered a lengthy written apology on Facebook promising to do better. His term is set to end in July, but elections could be pushed back from April until mid-May. We don't trust any government. We believe only the people will save the people. Three rail employees have been charged in connection with the crash. Charges range from causing transport disruption to manslaughter. If convicted, the punishment could be life in prison. As families of the victims wait for answers, anger and unrest unfolds on the streets. Crystal Gamansen, Global News. Love. Nationwide protests, which have largely been peaceful, are heating up. The streets of Paris are on fire, and riot police are out in full force. Protesters continue to oppose France's controversial pension reforms after the Prime Minister passed them without the approval of Parliament. She says the reforms are not a personal issue and that she wanted to go to the originally planned vote but couldn't win a majority. So what I can tell you is that until the last minute, with my ministers, we did everything we could to bring together a majority on this law. You know, with the President of the Republic, we wanted to go to a vote. But protesters believe it is personal. They're not only against raising the working age from 62 to 64, but also the way the reforms were passed. It's a pity. It's bad news for social democracy. It's kind of a confession of weakness. It's proof that the president's party is a minority in parliament, but he's also in minority in public opinion. The National Assembly was set to vote on the reforms on Thursday. But minutes before, Emmanuel Macron took a last-minute decision to enact special powers under Article 49.3 of the Constitution, bypassing the vote. Furious MPs called for the president's resignation before singing the national anthem in protest. The Prime Minister who delivered the news sounded out by La Marseillaise. It's a song that dates back to 1792, with references to the violent French Revolution. A fitting choice considering the reactions on the streets. He doesn't have this majority anymore, so he's trying to find every means for the Fifth Republic to pass it by force. Doesn't he see us? Doesn't he hear us? So I'm a little bit upset here. Workers have been striking across the country for the last two weeks, and they're showing no signs of slowing down. Tom Kennedy, ABC News.
los militares que están a favor de este gobierno. Hola. 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 Hola.